Okay, so you guys are officially being recorded. So don't say anything you don't mean. So how is everybody? Everybody's good. Are you all muted? Is that why I can't hear you? Yeah, no, I just, you I just, just the, unmuted. Um, well, doing great, um, and thanks, thanks so much for doing this today, Lisa. This is wonderful. Oh, yeah, thank I, you, Lisa. Hope it works. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, speaker view. Um, yeah, did that make me bigger for you? <laughs> no. No, no, you're the same. You um, look like a participant right now. Well, that's good. I am a participant. All participant. Now we see you as a teacher. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I wanted to say thank you for. Um, I wanted to say doing this as a as a remote thing. Um, right now, Vermont is on fire. We, I don't, we've been so good, and all of a sudden, we're not anymore. Um, so that's a problem. We, we are way up. It's just ugh. So I probably am the worst person to travel right now because we've got it all around. Mark's got it at work, and you know, it's bad. So I appreciate that you're letting me do it this way because you really don't want me to do it. <laughs> um, so where is my hand? So yeah, a few little few, I, I am going to ask because what's happening is I me through other people's things. So if you mute, that won't happen. Let's try everybody mute yourself or I can mute you. <laughs> If I mute you, that there, that's much better. Is that better for everybody? Thumb, thumbs up if that's better. Cindy has a question. Okay, okay. Unmute your, now you have to unmute yourself, Cindy, and then ask your question. Even though you muted me? I didn't mute you. Did you mute you? Now you're muted. Put, push it again. You're still muted, Cindy. Now I'm not. There now you I'm go. Not. Okay. Now you're uh, okay. Your image is is jumping from being the size, uh, like a little size, not really little, to big, and then Gretchen and her friend. Uh, you, you keep like rotating on my screen. That's all I see, and you're you're kind of choppy when when you're talking. Okay. okay. Joseph, uh, hold on. Let me try something. He's gonna try something. <laughs> uh, is that happening to other people? Not since you muted us. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a setting on your end, Cindy. Probably so. So while Joe's figuring that out, um, so you you all have a board that looks like this, and I hope you took it out of the package. And I'm gonna to explain to you how it got to this stage. And the way I'm gonna do that is I did a little video of me doing that yesterday. So I'm gonna show you that video if I can share my screen here. So bear with me while I go to sharing content. Take me a couple of seconds, but that's gonna, I'm gonna talk through it. So you'll, you'll hear me talk while we do this. I hope that works. Uh, okay, um, somebody unmute yourself and tell me that you can see this. <laughs> I can't, well, I didn't mute myself, but I cannot see it. You can't see the video? No, I'm okay. seeing your husband's name. That's what I see too. Oh, interesting. Oh, darn. Okay. Never mind. I'm going to I'm not I'll see you live. <laughs> I'll do it the hard way. I had a feeling that was going to happen. Okay. I'm going to 
Stop sharing. Okay. Um, we'll get this all worked out eventually. What did you hit to make those come up? Okay. Okay. Why won't you go here? Okay. Okay, now do you see my, is my yes. um, board in the screen for you? Yes. Cindy, are, you, are you able yes. to see that board? Okay, perfect. Yes. All right. Yes. yes. Okay. If you go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby or wherever, um, you can get these boards. They, um, they're really cheap and you can play and you can paint on them, you can collage on them, you can, I don't know, make little cat dishes. <laughs> um, but this is what I used. And I found the, this little story about Zeus and the artichoke online. Um, and I went into um, Word and I, pasted the text and then I changed the font so that it looks like it's handwritten. And then I printed it out on newsprint. Um, I like using newsprint because it's a little bit uh, more absorbent. So it holds the glue really well and the glue actually comes up through and makes a nice, you can feel on your, on your board that it almost feels hard rather than papery. Um, that's because the glue has gone through this when I put it on. If you have any questions, um, raise your hand because I, uh, how do I do that? I need to switch to gallery. Okay, yeah, raise your hand and then I'll know to, or just unmute yourself and, and ask the question. That would be the best way. Okay, so to put this on here, I'm going to use my glue which is what is in this little magic jar that you have. And this is golden matte medium. Let's see if I can. So there it is. If you wanna write that down, you can get that at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or online at Dick Blick. Any, any art supply place would have this. Golden is one of the best um, ones to buy stuff from. Their, their products are really, really well made and they'll last a long time. So that's what this is. You open up your little jar. Okay. So um, so I glue, put the glue on the board, not on the paper. And I just put a little bit on like the first two inches or so. <coughs> and I'm gonna center this. I start, I know that this fits perfectly on this board because of the way I laid it out. So I'm gonna center it down on the bottom and then Lay it down and it should fit just right on there. Okay, so I've only got glue up here in the top. And then I take the paper and I flip it up and I put some more glue down. It's not going to stick this morning because it's morning. Okay. You guys see what I'm doing? Okay. Let me know yeah. if you need let me know if you need me to change any angles or anything. Okay, so I just did another like two or three inches and I pull it down. And there may be some wrinkles on yours. I my goal is to make everything look old. So if it's got wrinkles, I don't mind. <laughs> but you can get most of the wrinkles out if you really smoosh it around. 
Anyway, you keep working down the page until the whole thing is glued. The reason I did this ahead of time for you is this needs to dry overnight. So. I'm going to keep going down. And this is the way this glue works on the whole process we'll be doing. So you'll find it's, it's really kind of fun. I have a little rubber brayer here. It's kind of soft and squishy. So it really takes the wrinkles out. I don't know if you can see those, but it just flattens them right out. So then I flip it over and I'm gonna I have to keep checking that you can see this where I put it. That's okay. great. Okay. Um, I just miter the corners with my X-Acto knife. Did you all have a mat or something that you can use to cut on? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so I mitered those corners so that I can just flip the edges over. I'm going really fast with this, but you can see why I, it would have taken you guys a while and it seems like boring time. So <laughs> if my video had worked, I could have sped up through this, but anyway, you get the idea. Good to have paper towel around. You're gonna end up with glue all over your hands or you're not doing it right. <laughs> all right. So then when I flip it over, I can do one more rub with my now that I'm holding it down on the back the rubbing the front will work better so there it is I'll hold this up close so you can see so you can see that there are a few wrinkles some of those will come out as it dries it sort of stretches anyway so that's how I got your board done now this is wet and it needs to dry overnight before I can use it but I have another one so we're good I'm gonna take my brush and put it in the water because it will dry out really fast and put the lid back on my glue because that will dry out very fast also. Except the lid doesn't wanna go on. Okay. So if you look at the picture that I gave you, this little guy, um, you'll see that the edges, the corners are darker than the middle. And that is a way to sort of focus in on the artichoke itself. So this is the finished piece and up here on the edges and down here, it's darker. So that's what this stuff is for, this distress ink. This is really fun stuff because it's transparent. It's totally transparent. And it's, um, if you use, you could use watercolor, but it's so wet that it takes so long to dry. This doesn't take long to dry and you can really smear it around and make it very thin. And I use it in all kinds of colors on my collages now, because it's just, it's like a stain um, and it comes in all kinds of different colors. I'm not sure why it's called distress ink. I think it's because people use it to make it look old. So they're saying distress is old, I guess. So if you open it up, you'll see that it's just a tiny little ink pad. And that's what your funny little um, candle, candle holder is. That fuzzy thing is what we're gonna use to put the ink on. So you just rub it on here. So you get some on. You don't need too much, you can see that it's just barely showing on there. Um, better to put too little on than too much. <laughs> and see how that made a spot there? Now I can rub it out. 
So you put it on and then pull it around. And it, it's like old parchment. So you see that? So why don't you guys try a little bit of that? And I would suggest that you just put a little tiny bit on there um, at first, and you can always put more if it's not dark enough for you. If you put too much, it's kind of hard to lose it. And this is when the fun begins. And just remember to keep the, the center area sort of clear where your artichoke is gonna go. Everybody's so quiet. Somebody come on and tell me how it's going. <laughs> it's fun. Good. <laughs> Is it looking old? It should be looking old. It should be starting to look like you found a piece of paper in the bottom of a trunk somewhere. Did everybody read this? Yes. It's a funny story. <laughs> okay, mine's done. Of course it is. Well, you guys take your time. I know, I know how it, react so it did it did what I was thinking it would do. Now I have one spot that's a little dark. I'm just gonna see I have baby wipes that I believe will wipe up some of that. Nope. No go. <laughs> Scratch that. <laughs> Worth a try. So work up from, from light to dark, otherwise you can't go back. <laughs> We've been cleaning out the old farmhouse, Lisa, and coming across quite a few old papers. And Ooh. there are no two old papers that have the same aging on them. And I'm clinging to that reality right now. <laughs> Hang on to those papers for me, Cindy. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Anything good? Are they, are they old or are they just like 1970s? Oh, sh no, ma'am. The, the house was built in the turn of the century. So what I, I was going to so say say is they smell so if you've got a uh, you know they smell old so if you've got a a recipe for getting rid of old smell out of paper let me know <laughs> yeah no i don't <laughs> so it's less better on this part of it um yeah probably you can go back and put more on later if you want um, but once you paint, like once we do those, uh, let me hold this up. Once you do these things, you, you won't be able to go under those without painting on them. So, um, but yes, generally less is more with this.
And if you if you want to hold your your thing up to your screen, I can take a look at it. Tina's doing it. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. Now you might want to go on the sides as well. I did. Oh, go up the sides also. Yeah, in between the corners too. Okay. Um, just to sort of connect the dots. Yeah, Beth, I would put a little bit more on the on the edges so that it's not so much um, dark in the corners. And the same with yours, Sharon. Oh, you came with us to see. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, just just connect uh, up in these areas okay. on the on the edges between your corners. Okay, a little bit. <clears throat> Very good. Rose, you know what? This is actually easier than running around the room trying to see everybody's stuff, right? <laughs> it's just so quiet. Do they make seven by nine ready-made frames? Yes, I think you can find those pretty easily. Okay. Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whatever. How long does the um, distressed ink in this container last? Um, I've been using them since May and I haven't got any that have dried out. They say to store them upside down. Okay. Um, so that the ink is always filling the pad. I don't know. That was my question too, because they're such little pots. I would think they would dry out quite quickly. Um, but so far they haven't. <laughs> and that little pad that's on top of your little wood. Um, yeah. How um, can you continue to, can you keep, can you keep using that over and over or do you buy more? To be honest with you, I haven't used this type of pad before. Um, if you go to Michael's or whatever, they have these little kits and it has this to rub it on and these pads are on Velcro. Oh, okay. And what I do is they come with like 10 of these pads in a kit. And okay. I use, so I have a red, a red one, I have a green one, I have a blue one, and I just change the pad depending on what I'm, what color I'm using. Cool. So you could, if you're only gonna use it to make it look like worn paper, you could just keep this one and keep using it with that same distress ink that, that I gave you. Um, okay. If you just, Stayed with brown, you could always use this one. It would be fine. But well, if you- Doesn't dry hard. No, no. So yeah, so these, these work well too. I want to share that I had the same issue with initially it being dark in the corners. That's why my corners look dark and uh, yeah. I tried I tried a Lysol bleach wipe that I just yanked out of the kitchen very lightly, and it might have brought a little up. Okay. But maybe, no. maybe not a lot. And I had a question I put in the chat, Lisa. You were oh. you were um, you were referring to the medium as glue, right? You used the medium, the matte medium as glue, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it, it's a little bit more uh, long lasting and archival than than like Elmer's glue, okay. and it doesn't seem to wrinkle things quite as much as it doesn't have as much water in it. I think as Elmer's glue does. Okay, so now you've got your background all set. Everybody feel okay about that? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Then. I got myself an artichoke yesterday. <laughs> so there you go. See, we can, oh, that's kind of neat. See, it's already done. Click. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to get this to be our guinea pig because look at the shadows on that. Mm -hmm. and that that's, that's why it's such an interesting, I mean, pineapple would be interesting too. Um, anything that has a lot of different leaves and shadow potential. It's all about light. 
right? You could, you could draw this in black and white very easily because it's like white on that side because I've got my light sitting over here. Um, white on the left and dark on the right. So that's what we're going to be doing. And that's why working on this project is going to help you in, in any painting you want to do because it's just teaching you how to, how to do values. Um, so this is my, my little um, thing that I'm going to use for inspiration today. Cindy wanted me to demonstrate how to eat it, but I couldn't, it takes 15 minutes to cook it. So I don't know when I'm going to cook it, Cindy. You should have cooked <laughs> one ahead of time. They're no good if they're cooked ahead of time. Oh, okay. So, and it cost me four bucks. This was three ninety nine Ooh. for one artichoke. <laughs> so anyway, all right, you have your little stash of papers here. And we're gonna start playing with those. Um, so move your board out of the way and turn towards your papers. So the white one with the black line is your template. And then all the other ones are your, are your colors. And you guys can play with this, do whatever you want. Um, but my intent was that the leaves would be the green and the, the, the first, the gold that has more red in it is for the, um, for these parts that go up. I don't know what those are. There's a decorative element. And then this, these are all William Morris prints, by the way. Um, this one is gonna be for the lower leaves on the artichokes, these guys here. And those could be green if you wanted to. Um, and then the red is for this part in here and the stem. And then we're gonna be painting on top of it. So you have green, dark green, lighter green and brown um, that you can use to change these colors if you want. So I'm gonna start with the leaves and that's the green. So I'm just gonna take my template and put it right over it, right over that page, match up the page. And then I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife. Lisa. Sorry? Lisa. Yes. I have a question. Go ahead, <clears throat> on, on something that you sent out, you said that our finished product was gonna be eight by 10 and it wasn't yeah. until last night I realized that the canvas board is seven by nine, but when I put the artichoke template on it, it goes practically from edge to edge. Yes. So if we frame this, it's gonna actually cover up part of the artichoke design. Yeah. It seems like this template was sized for a by 10. Am I, am I? <sighs> Oh, Gretchen, you're too smart. <laughs> if I had realized that this template was large, uh, when I, I could have um, gone to some place and, and had it photocopied on a reduced scale. Yeah, you but could. Ruth, 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 Ruth's printer doesn't have that capability. What happened? I have to apologize. My um, this one I did on eight by ten, and that was the template that I used. So you got me. <laughs> um, but it does fit. And what you can do is mount this on an eight by ten piece of mat board, and then frame it as an eight by ten. Okay. You follow me? So let me, I think could I have we, it eight uh, by 10. Could we also age the, uh, you know, if we used a beige uh, mat board, could you age, age it out? You um, could, you could. So here's an eight by 10 canvas, hang on. So you could mount it on there like that. Does that, does that solve the problem? Okay. 
Hmm. I'm sorry about that. That's totally my. Yeah, that's totally no. <laughs> um, probably won't be my first one. My last one today. <laughs> So that, I think that'll work. Um, and actually this floating it is what I've been doing with all of my pieces. Um, and then I frame outside of that float uh, and it actually works really nicely. Um, so I then, think then, your mount, then your framing is not under glass. Is that right? You, you could put it under glass. You don't have to. I, I haven't. Okay. Um, if you buy an eight by ten frame, it, it, it's probably going to have glass, and you just throw out the glass. If you're, um, but you you could do it with or without the glass. Um, okay. I like the floating idea, and we would probably want to do the edge. Yes. Uh, aging that also. Yep. Yep. Just run your. Just. Uh, Take this right on the edge. Yeah. Hey, I seriously, if you planned it, I like it because I don't think I have anything in my home that has that, what you call floating. Yeah. The, it, the dimension, it, I love that dimension. It works really well. It's what I did with all of those pieces that are down at the Weathersfield Inn. Oh, Sharon, Sharon can attest to it. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, really great. Right, I went to the, the opening of that and it was awesome. If you look, this so, is big. Well, this isn't meant to be at all. Okay, okay, so let's go back to cutting this sucker out. So you're going to match up your papers. Oops, don't match up your papers because they don't fit. Hold up your can maybe you can see that. Yeah, um, make sure the tip. See, see how I can see the green behind this? Yeah. Yeah. If I match up the paper, it goes above it. So it doesn't work there. Yeah. So just hold it up to some light so that you're sure that you've got green behind all of your artichoke, your main artichoke. And then so the way I cut it out is I'm going to do this in red marker so that I say that and I don't have a red marker. Um, about copper. <laughs> this is what I, my first cut is going to be this first layer of leaves on the bottom. There, can you see that? Hold it up. Boy, that doesn't show up at all, does it? Yeah, I can see it, but can you see it? Yeah, since you told us what it is. Okay, so the bottom, you've got one, two, three, four, five leaves that you're gonna cut. And I just cut it as one piece. So you don't have to cut in between those leaves. You're just gonna, so I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> so you cut around here. And as long as you cut off the same template, then you know that it's all going to match up. And you can, um, when you're doing these, you, you can go search for patterns online and then just print out pages of the patterns. That's what I do to get the colors that you want. So, so then it comes out as this one piece. It's like cutting out a jack-o-lantern. So there's my first row of leaves and I could stick them on here just to see how they look, all right? But don't, don't glue it right now. We're just gonna cut out leaves for now. So go ahead and do that. 
<laughs> Let me know when you're done with that. If it slides around on you, you could tape it down to your mat, to your board. Um, I don't know if I would tape down the top piece because you're going to be changing the color underneath there. Or maybe tape the top piece down and change the color. I don't know. When you, when you finish cutting that out, you could just stick it, just lay it on your board and we're gonna build up the artichoke. So it's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. So just put it aside on your board and then we'll go on to the next one. And if you want, you could keep these little pieces that you cut out of your template. And then if you wanted to make another one or try again or try with different colors or whatever, you've still got these pieces, the pieces to your jigsaw puzzle. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next layer. Um, so the next layer is going to be the six leaves that are just above the ones that you just cut out. I'm going to line them out here. And uh, maybe you can see that there. So it's that next, I'm gonna put little marks on it. So it's this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out those. So I'm gonna line that back up with what I cut out before. And I'm gonna cut these out.
Okay, so now I've got a second piece here that I'm gonna just lay over here. Doesn't look anything like an artichoke yet, but it will. Hey, Lisa. Yeah. Um, I wasn't watching. Uh, I was cutting. When you yep. positioned the template on your green uh, paper for the second cut. I just put it exactly in line with the first one. Yeah, but so does it not give you the benefit of looking different or do you, is that not the goal? We will be, when we paint, we're going to do things to these pieces that uh -huh. will, and that's why we're, that's why we're separating them now. It's easier to shade them when they're not connected. <laughs> I got you. So go ahead and line it up and cut it that way. That's right. Gotcha. It's hard to watch and do. I know. I know. As is the case when we're in person too, right? Oh yeah, we, we, we then have a neighbor we can talk to. <laughs> Which I miss you guys. They yeah, that's the, that's the part that's missing. It's very, it's way too quiet. Lisa, I have this neat little uh, small, maybe 12 by 12 mat that rotates. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, so that, it, that's perfect for this. It really would be. I'm thinking about how I like to cut the blade toward me. Yeah. Some of these I'm not so, doing. That. So it's like a lazy Susan? That it sure is. is. That's, I'll have to look for one of those. That's a great idea. There, that you can find them at Hobby Lobby and Joann's and places okay. like that. Hmm. Especially good when you're, you're um, what's the word I want to say? When you have small pieces, you know, yeah. fabric that you're trying to troop square up. Yeah. So that There's allows- Some very cool little X-Acto knives that have a tiny blade and they act more like a pen. Yes, I have one that too. I want one. Can I have yours? <laughs> you come get it. You can have anything. I <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can probably guess that the next thing is to do the four leaves that are above that. I don't think I need to show you that. I'm just going to go ahead and cut those. So we're just doing these in layers. And like I said, this is so that we can shade these leaves without painting all over each other. This is what I do when I'm painting the barns. I cut them out in different pieces of the barn and then I paint on all the pieces and then I glue it all back together again. It's the craziest process, but I'm really loving it. <laughs> Okay, so there's my my third one. Let's see, put it down here. I'm gonna put it on here. Like that. And then I'll do the final top one. So it would be to our advantage to go ahead and cut all three, one, two, three, or four without. Moving your template. 
Right. Okay. Yep. Said the girl who just made a mistake. <laughs> there are no mistakes. Each one will be different. Each one will be unique. Well, if you are, if you almost cut the little crescent of leaves in half, we can cover that up when the time comes. Yeah. Anything that gets cut that shouldn't be can be glued back together again. It's very forgiving. <laughs> oh, you're forgiving. <laughs> Lisa? Yeah. Um, I didn't position my first cut. I positioned my first cut on the paper to conserve the paper. I didn't realize that it that the whole artichoke head was to be, what am I trying to say, um, done in sequence. It's okay. You don't, you don't have to, you can move it and do it in another spot as long as it's on the green. Okay. Thanks. Yep. And then there are two more leaves The these two on the bottom are also green. So I'm going to cut those out too. And you could try conserving your paper here if you want. If you move it up a little bit, then you'd have more paper to play with for something else. Um, again, you can just hold it up to the light to see if you have enough room. So that's, yeah, you can't see that through the light. So I'm, Lisa, now I'm curious, could you use instead of paper, I told you I have the William Morris print actual fabric. Could yeah, you use fabric? Fabric would be beautiful. Wonder how fabric. it would change. I mean, what would it change as far as gluing? It, it, the, I think the glue would work fine if it's just cotton that you're using, like your quilting cotton. Um, I think it would be. I think it'd be beautiful. I don't know. Could you cut these curves? Well, I was curious, a lot of times we uh, use spray starch. Spray starch, yeah. To or in order to keep your fabric firmer. Or, yep. And I'm, I, it's worth playing with. I might try this in my spare I would, time. I would I, love to see that. Okay. You stabilize the back with a uh, fusible and then yeah. you can get it like. Yes, said the professional quilter. Yeah. Yeah, you, you could make a quilt of this artichoke. That would be nice. I want Go one. Go for it, Tina. <laughs> okay, now. Oh, I see what you did. You conserve by going up on your leaf. Okay. Yes. Is this the last one that will get cut out of the screen? Yes. What about the little guys at the bottom? Those are hand painted. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Or you can cut them out if you want. Uh, no, I'd much rather paint them. Okay. Um, I can send you the PDFs of these templates so that you can print out more if you want. Um, cool. Can you send us the um, wording? You know, sure. She, yep. Thank you. Yeah, because now once you have the tools, you could do several of these quite easily. Okay, so. Can you buy newsprint uh, for your computer just like you buy other fabric, I mean, other papers? So I buy newsprint. Um, I get a big pad of it and I cut it up into eight and a half by 11. I haven't found eight and a half by 11 pads of newsprint that I can put through the printer. So I get it in bigger sheets and cut it down to eight and a half by 11 that'll go through my printer. 
Where do you buy the newsprint, however? A Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any any uh, craft or art supply. It's um, sketch sketch pads. Let me find that. Have you ever tried parchment? I have not, um, but it would work. It would be nice. So this is my giant thing of newsprint. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. These are cheap. This is 18 by 24, so I can get four sheets. Maybe would, get... would parchment hold in ink, though? That's what I was wondering. It would be irregular. Yeah, it would be very irregular. Um, you'd have to just play with it. I use the newsprint because I'm using newspapers. Um, so I find newspapers online and then I print them out on the newsprint um, and sometimes I'll fade it in Photoshop so that so it looks older or I can make it sort of brownish. Um, and then then my printout really looks like it came from an old paper from an old newspaper, like the one you have in your house, Cindy. <laughs> but it doesn't smell. That's right. <laughs> So how's everybody coming with their cutouts? I'm finishing my last leaf. Oh my, I'm very behind. Me too. <laughs> Not to worry. We'll take a break at, yeah, it's almost 10. So we'll take a break at 10. And if you wanna keep going and catch up, you can, or you can, Go do something else for a few minutes. Um, I'm just gonna step away. And I don't know if Cindy had a plan for 10 o'clock. Look, look at your artichoke, I love that. <laughs> Ooh. I just like the way you, when you held that up, it was like, Ooh. <laughs> It's so um, pretty against the dark paint. I mean, the dark against the newsprint. Yes, I do have a plan. Okay. It, it's not long. That's okay. All right. We got to get back to work, so. I can do it anytime. And if you hear your name, then you're, you're lucky. <laughs> so I have some trivia, if anyone's interested. Trivia, oh, sure. Well, it's, I mean, it's sort of trivia for this, but um, so when I went up to Vermont with my husband to see Lisa's barn thing, we listened to books on tape and, um, or audio books or whatever. And one of them I started was on Van Gogh and I'm listening away and it's like, yeah, Van Gogh started mixing his paintings with words <laughs> and made oh, really. <laughs> And I was like, wait, back that up. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, sure enough, I went back and looked at his, um, at the complete works of art that he did. And he, he did marry the two, not, not to the extreme that you are, but he would, he would use other people's words and then impose a painting upon it. Really? Um, yeah, I can actually find you the, I <laughs> the thing I was like oh this is hilarious and it yeah. also would not have caught my attention right at all um had it not been for you know what you've been doing so yeah, yeah. plowed on through that part and instead I was like back it up look up some photos <laughs> that's funny oh. well see I must be Drawing on something, I don't know. <laughs> what, nothing is new under the sun? That's right. Okay, I have put everyone's name in a little basket. Am I muted? No, I'm not muted. And I am going to draw a door prize and in the mail in the next, give me a couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> You'll receive a little 
Your prize. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. Okay, let me see. And the winner of the door prize is Tina Barcelona. I can deliver <laughs> yours, Tina. <laughs> Congratulations. That's Tina. Can y'all see Tina? Yeah. Hang around. Don't leave early. <laughs> so Thank you, Cindy. That's great. I, 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 what is it? Can you tell us? No, indeed. Oh, My no. husband picked it up and he said, should I show him? And I said, no, no. Well, you tell him we say thank you. Yes. You are welcome. I'm, I'm sure it's some lovely piece of Appomattox. <laughs> it is a lovely piece. I might say that. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it is 10 o'clock, so let's meet back at 10.05. But I am, in order to get you to stand up from your chair, I'm going to ask you to go find something that inspires you to do some kind of artwork that you have sitting around your house, just an item. It could be something that you did, or it could be something that you have that inspires you.
Okay, I'm going to call everybody back if you're around and can hear me. I can. <laughs> Can't see you. Here. You don't see me? No. Just see a blank. Oh, this part. But do you, do you see my lovely face? In here. No face. Oh, okay. Well, that's all right. You don't need to see my ugly mug. <laughs> Cindy, you look like you're hopping around pretty well. Did it go well yesterday? It did. Good. Uh, oh, part of my show and tell will be an explanation of what they did. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. so now it, it, you know, it's sore, but it, it's, uh, it was so good. And I watched him do it. <laughs> oh, you did do it. Oh, you're yeah, great. I did. But nevertheless, um, it did they give you something so you didn't care what they did? Uh, no, he put lidoderm, which is paint, you know, that, yeah. that smarted. But uh, after that, no, you couldn't feel it. Good. Very good. Well, I'm glad that's behind you. But thank you. And it did, but it did not supply me with a shot of energy. Oh. <laughs> if anything, it, it sapped it. This is the longest I have sat still upright in a very long time. Hmm. So thank you for the push. Well, I hope it doesn't make you worse. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll come and get you. <laughs> okay, let's see. Sharon, are you here with us? I oh, wait a minute. I lost the tip of my artichoke. Where did it go? The littlest piece. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead. Sharon will have to catch up. Um, so now we're gonna shade these little guys and I hope you can see okay. I'm gonna move this a little closer. What do you have under your uh, what's the clear thing? Under my what? Do you have just a piece of paper under those? No, so, this is, uh, you can use a piece of paper. I'm using a paper palette um, just because I had it. Uh, whoops. Okay. Um, it's this waxy paper stuff that uh, you can paint on it and wipe it off. And it just keeps my board clean, but you could just put a sheet of paper. Piece I wonder of paper. If, if freezer paper, you know, would work. That would work. That would be good. Or wax paper. Okay. I see, oh, I see it. Okay. I, I thought I seriously lost my little tip. So what we're going to do is for each of these little layers, we want to make them dark down at the bottoms because that's, that's coming. When we look at our artichoke, let me see if I can get this lit properly. Um, it's not going to be, it's not going to work for that. Um, so when you look at this one, see how it's dark, darker down at the bottoms and at the bottom of the leaf that come, that's how these leaves appear in front of those leaves. Let's try that again. These leaves appear in front of those leaves because these are darker, okay? The lighter one pops out. So we're gonna add darkness on the bottom here and on the bottom. So on the bottom of each of your rows, we're gonna make them darker. And that was the benefit of cutting it up like this, that we can just add darkness on the bottom without having to figure out where all the different leaves are. So there are a couple different ways you can do that. You can go back to your ink and that's a pretty easy way to do it. That'll make it a little darker, but it also makes it a little orangey. So I'm gonna put a little bit on and see if I like it. 
a lot of this is just playing around and seeing what happens. Um, so I'm going to put this on here and I'll hold it up so that you can see. So can you see how that, no, we can't see. Ah, there we go. You see how that made it darker on the bottom? And also the way I cut the, it just so happens the pattern on this, it's darker down on the bottom anyway. So that was fortunate. It depends on where, where you put it on your template, um, where you put the template on the paper. So I'm gonna do that for each one. And then I'm gonna put them back together again, just on my paper here and see how that looks. So I've got two rows of them here and I put it back and you can start to see how that is pushing that back. Maybe, can you see that? Um, this is where being in person would be a little better. <laughs> And I think that my distress ink isn't gonna make it darker enough for me. So I think I'm gonna to go to my paint, but I'm gonna do this first just to see where it takes me. Would you suggest we wait right now, Lisa? Um, you can play, why don't you play with the ink a little bit and see what you think. Okay. Um, I, what I'm disappointed with is I can't really show you up close because I lose the light when I pick it up towards the camera. Maybe I can zoom in on it. Let me try that. Oops, it just tore. Yeah, you have to be a little gentle with it. Oops, I just lost my thing, didn't I? Oh, shoot. Uh, I'm sorry, I just lost my camera up here. Give me a minute. So if it tore like mine and Tina's did, do we just wait until we glue it down to correct it? Yes, I would just just place it where it should be. Okay. Okay, I think I got me back. Okay. I don't know what happened here. No. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get frustrated here, do you mind? <laughs> you could mute yourself if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Uh, now it's upside down, though. That's weird. No, it's not. Okay. But for some reason, it got weird. Okay. I am going to darken this with paint because I'm not. 
Is that our option? Later? Yes. Okay. Now or later? Um, now. Okay. So I'm going to use the dark green, which is one of your three little pots and the little flat brush that you have. And I hope you all have a little water with you. I have water in a little dish like this. This acrylic paint? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on here. And then I'm just gonna, on my paper here, I'm just gonna make a little spot of it. Like I said, you could do that on regular paper. It's gonna soak it up a little bit. Wax paper would be great. So I'm just putting, I'm gonna follow my leaves and just put a little bit and then I'm gonna brush it out so that it blends up and isn't just a solid line of dark. I think you can see that. Hold it up here. You see how that leaf is delineated from the next one? <laughs> So go up to, yes, go up between the two leaves to create a. Make the line. So on your template, you had a line there dividing the two leaves. Right. So that with, your, with your okay. paint. Good, 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 good. So there's the second one. And yeah, the line, the, the way the print worked on mine is kind of funny, but that's all right. There. So now it's starting to look like separate leaves a little bit. And I like that better than what the ink was doing. The ink wasn't making enough of a difference for me. So this is the same paint that I use for the floor cloths. It's my weird exterior um, grade acrylic enamel stuff. It's weird, <laughs> but you could use craft paint that you get at um, Michael's or Hobby Lobby, whatever. So it's exterior grade enamel? Yeah, it's what I use on the floor cloths. You don't need to be using exterior grade enamel for this project. <laughs> you could also do it in oils, which would let you be a little bit more transparent. Um, if you're used to using oils. So. That one, can, can you see how that darkened the bottom a little bit? Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna do that on the second one, which I did put the ink on first. Lisa, when you adjusted your camera, yeah. was, your, was your intent to go closer to what you're doing or further away? I was, I, when I lost it, I was trying to zoom in and now I, it's zoomed out. I, okay, I, understand. Right. I just wanted to make sure. I can move it closer there. Well, is that actually, better? Yeah, that, that is better. Actually, um, it would be the same thing that we would see on this cute little print you gave us, right? Right. Yeah, on the, on the little tiny piece, you can see it. Right, okay on this one. So right there, what I just did was I put some paint down and I wanted to spread it out a little bit. So I took my brush and I put it in the water and cleaned it out. I have a paper towel here and I wiped it out and then I, while it was still wet, I was able to blend it up a little bit. So that's another trick you can do.
Lisa, mm -hmm. is there any way you can get a closer view of what you're doing? It's really, really hard for me to see okay. exactly what's going I'm, on. Um, really close. Really close. Oh, that's much, much, much better. Only thing is now I've got a camera in front of my face, so it's hard, <laughs> hard for me to see it. <laughs> So you're darkening the bottom of the leaf, and which side are which side is the light coming from? Um, I'm putting this dead center on this one to keep it easier for you. You got so many leaves. If you want to add a direction, go for it. But one problem you have is I didn't give you anything lighter to light one side. Gotcha. I so you you're running the color up each side of each petal. Right, okay. going the middle and then coming up the side. Okay, thank you. Yep. I think it's neat how it sort of gives a feeling that it blends into the veins in the in the leaves. Yeah. Well, yeah. having a, using the um, print in the background keeps you from being too fussy about the color. Um, yeah, and about how you're putting the paint on because it's already all messed up. <laughs> you can't control it. <laughs> the print messed it up. So that's what I like about it. It keeps it a little looser. So now when I put them together, you can start to see the distinction there. There. So this one is turned up, so the light is looking different on it. But I want, so right here, I'm feeling like I need more distinction here. So I'm gonna make this darker in behind. And this will dry very fast, so probably faster than you want it to. Yeah, okay, so that's coming along. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with that third layer. Anybody wants to show me what they're working on, I'd be happy to take a look and suggest things. Just unmute yourself and then hold it up to your camera. There, so now I've got, you can see how that's all of a sudden looking like an artichoke. It's got some shape. Even though it's all curled up on my paper. <laughs> Uh, Lisa, on that second row of leaves, can you yep. separate the bottom one just a minute? Did you go up in between the leaves? Or are they not, maybe they're not as, uh, what's the word? They're not as um, 
Okay, I see. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. That's what I mean. Okay. <laughs> they are not as delineated as that first row. Right. Um, we can do more delineating after we glue it. Good, because my first row is in two pieces. I'd love your opinion on what I've done, Lisa, but I don't know how to get it in front of the camera you hold, so you can. If you it. hold it up to the camera, I think I'll be able to see it maybe. Give it a try. Oh, hey, right, you can't hold it up. <laughs> yeah. Can you move That's your the... camera? Can you, is it a laptop or? Yeah. Not easy, not easy. Yeah. Unless you put row by row. Oh, there you go. That's good. I can see it a little bit. Can you tip it up a little bit? That looks good. Yeah. You see how you've got shape there? Yeah, I think so. Good. Yeah. It's interesting seeing it in two dimensions like that because it's almost easier. I actually, when I'm working, I'll photograph my work and then look at the picture and it, it gives me more information than standing there looking at the piece that I'm painting. And it, there's something about looking at it through a camera that gives you more information. I like that. I like how that blends with the print. Yeah. Lisa, are we going to paint the tip any color? Um, we don't have a light color to put on there for you. I know in the picture I've got it lighter. If you have a little bit of yellow or um, ochre acrylic okay, if paint. I, if I painted yeah. the wrong... <laughs> I painted dark the wrong tip. Would you just cut another one? Um, yeah, you could do that. That might be easier. See this little guy? Yeah. I painted the wrong <laughs> upside down. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, you could just cut another one. Um, if you wanted that to be yellow, you could use your yellow paper. Oh. What color was the blossom? I looked it up. I thought the blossom was kind of... It's purple. Yeah. I have to show you a picture that my brother got. My brother, I told you he grew some artichokes and he missed one out in the garden and it blossomed. And it's got this big, it's like a yeah. thistle. It's, were... it's, it is in the thistle family and it, it's a purple. It's beautiful. <laughs> Does it make you wonder who was the first person who ever tried to eat one of those things? Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> thought that it was edible. It's like, who was the one, first person to think eating a lobster was a good idea? Yeah. Oh my goodness, thank goodness he did. They must have been. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was those starving colonists. 
maybe. Okay, now how do you cut another one when the thing is so darn tiny? Okay, I think yeah, I'm, you're, I'm, you're gonna, gonna have to. I'm gonna paint it later. I was gonna say, you're gonna have to wing it if you do that, so. Wing it. <laughs> I know how much you like winging things. Cindy. Oh yeah. How's yours coming, Tina? Um, it's coming okay. Good. Gretchen and Ruth, how are you guys doing down there? Uh, we're doing a little slow. We're hanging so, on. Slow is okay. Hey, Lisa, I'm mixing. A, I have my acrylics nearby, so I'm mixing a little burnt sienna and Naples yellow for the tip of that. What do you think? That should work. That should be good. Yeah. You don't have any kind of craft paint, do you? What did you actually paint this one with, Lisa? So that, I think, was my... I mean, it looks gold. So did yeah, you cut it? It does look gold. I, you know what? I think that was some paper that I used that okay. the paper actually had a yellowy part to it. Um, but yeah, you could use any um, yellow ochre like this, like that. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, or uh, mix it with some white, um, just to tone it down a little bit. Okay, that's what I think I will do rather than cutting it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and um, if you're behind, that's okay. I just don't wanna get too far. What do you show? Um, I don't want to get too far behind here and we don't get done. And you can always go back. I'm recording this so you can go back and, and watch it again if you missed parts. So the next thing is going to be placing that, gluing that artichoke onto your board. So I positioned my template onto the board here. I held it up to the, to the light. You can't see me holding it up to the light. You can see it a little bit there so that I can tell that everything is within. And I'm sorry that it's so close. Gretchen called me on that. <laughs> but there is a way to fit the whole thing in. You just have to be a little careful about it. So what I would say is if you get it placed where you want it, I would make some marks on it with a pencil so you know where that corner is. so that when you pick it up, you'll be able to put it back down in the same place. Okay, so I've got it all calibrated here so I know where that's going to go. And then I'm going to take my little pieces of artichoke and move them out of the way. <clears throat> and put this down. There's my template on there. If, <clears throat> if you're worried about it, and I think I might Tape this just to be sure. You can tape this template down. I'm not, the board isn't taped down, but the template is. So it won't slide around on me. So then I'm gonna take each of these little pieces of artichoke and glue it down with inside that template without gluing it to the paper. <laughs> so.
You can use your uh, foam brush for gluing, or you could use the small flat brush. Either one is fine. The glue is very water soluble, so it'll come right out when you put it in your water. So I take my artichoke and I'm, you're not gonna be able to see me do this now. All right, I'll do it up in the air. <laughs> Just gonna put the glue on. And then I'm going to stick it down inside the template. Okay. And then I'm going to Take the next piece and do the same thing again. So it's in this process that if you tore one of your little rounds of leaves, you, you can, can correct. Yep. And Lisa, how did you know where to pay, place your template on the canvas board? I held it up to a light source <laughs> so okay. that, sure that you can see around the edge that it's in the right spot. And kind of the, the same space bottom to top, like right with those. Okay. Yeah. It's a close fit, so <laughs> be a little careful with it. Now, when I'm gluing this down, I just need to be a little careful about not gluing my, my template. I'm lifting this up and pushing the leaf down underneath here. The, the glue does dry very quickly. Lisa, I've been busy positioning my template and uh, taping it down. I've missed, how are you applying the glue to these little pieces with your finger? I'm using the, um, the sponge, this guy. Oh, the sponge brush. Okay, thank you. I'm doing it in my hand. I normally wouldn't do that. I'm just doing it in my hand so you can see. I would do it on the, well, I can do it right here. You can see it there a little bit. That's what I normally do is go like that. <laughs> Okay. See that, so. Mm, very fussy. Yeah, and you have to use a fair bit of that glue or it doesn't stick. Okay. I've gotten far enough that I'm gonna take my template off. It's just sort of in my way now. <laughs> And you can use your little brush that you were using on the green to glue that down too. And if you get glue on the top, it's clear. It's very clear, so don't worry about that. It likes to stick to your hand and not your template, not your board. So you can also, right now I'm putting some glue on the board because it was fighting with me. You can do that. I'm just using my brush. Okay. And lid. There. So 
So Lisa, where did you learn this technique? Or how did you come about doing this? I, I took a silly little online class called Tiny Tattered Houses. And she just, she showed how to do all these weird things with collage and I loved it. <laughs> and um, it's just very playful and you get to use all your, all your tools. <laughs> it's neat. It's very I neat. love it. It's really fun. And, and you can play with all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Well, I just got some on my face. Does that count? <laughs> that's good. That, that's really good. I usually wear it all over. <laughs> it's it's good for your I didn't know I wasn't. I thought I was muted. <laughs> no secrets here. So I'm gonna hold this up for you. It's just it's so dark when I hold it up because my light is in the wrong place. I go like that. Oh. And we're gonna be able to touch up the seams a little bit, right? That's right. actually, that's where I'm gonna go now. Okay. So I'm gonna take my, my small brush, this little teeny weeny guy, and I'm gonna start making some more dynamic lines in there that'll just push it back some more. Push, I'm constantly trying to push back those leaves that are behind the other leaves so the other ones will pop forward. So if your rows of petals, when they're glued on, show a little gap of the back. You're gonna, you're gonna fill it with greens. Yeah, I've got that happening, right? Yes, okay. Can you see, I see. that right there? I do. So I'm gonna fill that in. But I have lost my tip for the third time. <laughs> he doesn't want to be a part of this game. Well, he blends with, if he falls on the floor, he blends with that, <laughs> with my floor cloth. And it's, yep. open, it's in the is... section where the pine trees are. Uh, the same color, yep. Yep. Uh, speaking of color, did you choose the color that these William Morris uh, papers printed in? to match your paints so well, or was that accidental? I just gravitate towards those colors all the time. Okay. Because <laughs> they Every, match. Everything, everything ends up being that color with me. <laughs> right, they match very nicely. So I'm gonna use the Sussex green, which is the lighter green, this one, to start washing on some lighter areas here as well but I don't want to lose the the print that's in behind there so I'm not going to put too much on just a little bit and the way I make it just a little bit is to not put it on very thick it's just just a thin little wash so Gretchen here is where you can start making the picking a side like I just picked the left side of the leaves to be where the light's coming from okay oh that makes a big difference yeah Lisa, I have a lot of glue here on the 
leaves. Does this need to dry before I paint it? Um, you can wipe it off with your pencil or something. Um, just sort of dab it up a little bit. Is everybody glued now or we still going? I continue if I don't find my tip. Sure. sure. You, you're going to cut another one at some point anyway. <laughs> yeah. Or you could paint it in. Okay. Now this. So here's my yeah. artistic is I'm feeling like it's pretty much finished there. And you can see what happened to it. Where's your lid? I don't have these are not all stuck down the tips. Mm. Yeah, mine aren't either. Yeah, they, they, they will tend to pop up. You have to put a little more glue on there. So the next thing, I don't mean to rush you, but yeah. But you are anyway. <laughs> so we have to keep moving here. Um, I'm gonna cut my bottom leaf, the yellow leaves, and that's this paper that has the two flowers on it. Now you can get a little creative with this and Think about where you want um, the print to be. So when I did it, you can tell that there was this, this bothered me a little bit, this line right here, and that's print. So I'm gonna avoid that this time. <laughs> um, it, it's okay. And I love that. Uh, well, it's kind of interesting. It, doesn't, it, it just it, now that I see it, I'm like, I'm not going to have that happen again. So, think about where where you're placing your template when you cut that one. But we're going to go back to that thing, putting your template down and cutting out the paper underneath it. If you hold it up to the light, you can see what you're going to get behind there. Okay, I picked a spot where it's going to be darker on the right because I had my shadow on the right of my artichoke. So I've got something darker happening on the on the leaves over here. And now I'm going to cut this out.
Okay. So I got a, a little darker orange leaf over here, which I think is gonna be pretty cool. All right. I just wanted to show you. Some, you used the one with the tulips for that, right, Lisa? Yes. Okay. So I just wanted to show you how I, having just cut this and I put this down here, to me, it just looks, it looks really blah. So I want to add some dimension to it. So I'm going to make it darker right up close to the artichoke. And I'm going to do that with my, my, um, little uh, ink thing. The other thing, when I'm when I'm doing the large pieces, I'm tearing the papers quite often because I find that the edge is just more interesting. It's like whenever you can give up control of things, it makes it better. <laughs> so I tear a lot. You should see my studio. It's a disaster. It's like paper everywhere. <laughs> I'm glad Joe wasn't in here to hear you say that. <laughs> the okay. giving up the trouble part yeah so there you can see that that made a difference with the putting the darker up close now I'm going to make the lines in between actually I think I'll glue it down and then I'll put the lines on it's sort of up to you whether you feel like it's easier to deal with it with not glued down or after you glue it down. It's easier to see what effect it's gonna have after you glue it down, but in some ways it's easier to paint it when it's on not glued down, so. What, what are you using for those lines? I'm gonna use the brown, the brown paint, this one, the little, the little oh, couple. The actual paint, okay, okay. I think what I tend to do is if I'm washing color on, I will do it off of the board. And then when I'm doing more detail work, I do it on the board.
All right, I think I'm ready to glue that one down. Yeah, looks nice. So I don't need to use the template to glue this one down because I'm just, it, it knows where to, it's easy to see where it goes. Okay, I could not figure out why my gold bottom leaves wouldn't come off from my piece of paper and I forgot to do across the top. So, do I have to go back and cut again? Yeah. 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 I love the 3D effect that this gives. See how that just pops off the page? It's very cool. Really hard to get that much 3D effect from a painting. <laughs>
No, oh dear. It's 11.03. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun, huh? So we need to take another break. I don't know about you, but my eyes are starting to go a little crossed anyway. I wanted to show you my inspiration piece. This little guy, um, look at that. I don't know if you guys oh. know, I, I have donkeys. And yeah. A friend of mine bought me this. It's a little felted donkey. <laughs> oh, he's precious. He's so cute. He's just so fuzzy and you can squish his little nose and you can pull on his ears just like the real thing. <laughs> oh, he's your teddy bear. He, he's, he's a teddy bear, but it, it's just so teeny tiny. I and mean, this little piece that it's on is about three inches by five inches. That's precious. That's cool. It's very cute. And it, it just makes me happy. And I, that's what that's what art should do. It should make you happy. What are um, his eyes? How are they done? It's more Red? felt. It's more felted. Wow. More. Okay. I don't know if you can see. Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Did anybody else find anything inspirational around the house? I did. I had to dust it off. But <laughs> <laughs> I oh, like that's I like to do penny rugs. So yeah. this is uh, wool that's been felted from various family members like Joe's mom and, you know, different, oh, wow. different garments. But the interesting thing was you asked me how I did yesterday. So yeah. I don't know if you can see it's done with buttonhole stitch edging. Yep. Yep. Okay. So yesterday, um, when he found out what was wrong with the, um, First of all, guys, I had a knee joint replacement in uh, end of August, 1st of September, and one little area on my incision wouldn't heal. So I had surgery yesterday to find out why, and he found that one of the internal stitches was too close to the surface of my skin. Oh. So he, as he was cutting it out, he said that the internal stitches, the thread, is barbed so it goes in one way and because yeah. it's barbed it won't pull apart so and that reminded me of wool when i when you felt wool wool has barbs too and yeah. so when you wash it and manipulate it and they they start shrinking they won't it won't pull apart it won't fray like right. normal fa fabric so that will evermore remind me of wool felting that's cool that's right really neat. Right so did they use right the buttonhole knee. stitch on your leg? I actually asked him what <laughs> stitch. <laughs> the buttonhole would have been a nice one. It would have been so perfect. Um, no, he right. used the, and he, he called it something, but he actually tied off each stitch. Oh, not, wow. You know, knotted it and then clipped it and went to the next stitch. Right, right. So hopefully that will make my need pretty yes let's hope that it's all fixed now anybody else have any inspirational pieces they found i found this Ooh, did you do that i sounded it. that's beautiful i love the glass glass is hard hold it uh, closer uh tina or is it pottery it's, it's like a um uh Italian jug. Okay. Yeah, wow. That's really beautiful. I love the colors. He did it in an art class when he was in college. Nice. Very Thank nice. You. Thank you. Can I meet it in person the next time I'm over? Mm -hmm. I would. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, you can. Yes. Well, you guys are breaking the rules and running right through your break, but I think if we're going to get this done, we're going to have to break rules. Oh, 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 we got to, uh, we did yep. that at, at our four cloth classes also. <laughs> That's true. Some and I always complain. Lunch. They wouldn't go to lunch. That's right. Today, okay. you don't have a choice. <laughs> it's hard to shake up such few little things, but we'll find one. Okay. 
Sharon Matthews, you are yeah. the winner. Oh, yay. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> what do yeah. I win? Uh, I'm mailing it to you. If Joe was in here, before the end of class, oh. I'll, I'll walk over and show you. I mean, I'll bring it back over here. Awesome. Well, you don't have to, but the little kid in me is excited. I know. It's like Christmas. You don't want to wait for it to come in your mailbox. Lisa? Yes. Um, I, I have just uh, managed to finish cutting out that lower, those lower petals. What did you use for the mid rib? The, the brown, the brown paint. The brown, okay. And the little tiny brush. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And did you do that last? You can either do that before you glue it down or after you glue it down, whichever one makes you feel happier. Um, keep in mind that if, okay. you do, if you do it before you glue it down, you can go over the edges a lot more user friendly. <laughs> you don't have to be as exact. Okay. Um, did you put the mid rib in before or after you did the shading? After. After. Okay. And I shaded using the, the ink and then also the brown, just washing the brown on lightly. Brown on lightly. Okay. So I'm just going to keep going along here because of our time situation. And I'm going to cut out the, the red part next. Um, that's going to be this part of the stem. And it's just the same process. Anybody wants to show me what they're working on, go right ahead. Now that you've got things glued down, you should be able to lift them up to show I them. I can't can see. see. What are you putting that shading on? The, yeah. On the whole thing. Well, I'm trying to get it on the side. Yeah. Hmm. How did you end up with two of these? We all have to. Huh? How did you end up with two of these? I don't know. I had two in the kit. Oh, really? Yeah.
Did you not have to? No, I just had one. Oh, okay. Somebody got a bonus? <laughs> <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> Life is just a box of chocolates. <laughs> yes. Who knows? Maybe that's my door prize. That's right. After all, it did come to my door. Well, I'm glad everybody got it. I was, I was anxious about putting it in the mail. <laughs> Thanks for sending it to me. I, my uh, AOL is... Uh, is kaput, kaput oh. right now, so I'm not receiving anything. So, oh. are you shading with the um, brown? Yeah, brown. Yes. So I, I put a little bit of the, um, the the ink on there first, and now I'm just putting the brown on. Brown. So I'm putting it under where it's going to go under the leaf, and then I'm going to put some. So this is a little. Um, I don't know a little it, it, carving type thing. Um, so I'm just, I don't know what it is. I'm just putting some shape in it. <laughs> there. Now I'm gonna put some over on the side here. Just rip that right off. See my boo boo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when you when the paper gets wet from your paint, it, it is a little fragile. That's what just happened to me, but it's not a big deal. Was our, oh no, oh, there's another piece, okay. Doesn't want to stick at all. All right. So there's the red on there. My next thing is going to be the um, those things that come up the side. I don't know what they are. They just sort of frame the whole thing in. I'm going to use the uh, the paper that has the orange. I've been, I've been calling them the arms. The arms? Okay, good. Yeah, good. the arms. <laughs> around the artichoke. <laughs> mm -hmm. You could do that in the red. You've got enough red to do that. This is where you can go off and do your own thing if you want. Um,
or you could use the other um, the other yellow. Okay, so this one doesn't fit on this piece. So you're gonna have to cut it in two. You're gonna have to do two placements. There's one, and then I'll pick it up and do the other one. I'm just going to make sure that it works. And again, this is where you could get creative and make a different shape with these arms if you wanted, um, or make it wider or put a different leaf over there. You can do whatever you want or follow the template, whichever you wanna do. All right, so, oh, and then the stem is also that color. I made that stem a little longer than the template because I'm going to turn it over the edge of the board because I'm going to float that in the frame. So I don't want the piece to end right on the edge. And now we'll go like this. <laughs> oh boy. Looks pretty good. And then I have my two little leaves to put on here too. Starting to come together. I'm just gonna put a little bit of the um, ink, I think, on these. Now the inking you pretty much have to do off of before you glue it. Otherwise you end up inking the whole thing.
going to make the ink a little darker down at the bottom and then lighter as it goes up. I think I might um, a little brown right on the edge of this just to make it pop out a little bit. So I'm being really careful about this. I don't want too much. But this is where, again, it's a lot easier to do a, a thin line while I've got it off the board. Are you doing it with the ink? No, this is paint now. Paint. So I don't know if you can see that. But. So here you can see the one that's done and the one that isn't done and see how the one on the right has a lot more dimension to it than the one on the left because it has the shading on it. Oh no. Uh oh. Who oh, oh no. It's fixable. Okay. Everything's fixable. I didn't get the um, template fully on the on the center of the piece. Oh. Um, okay, how am I gonna fix it? Can you show me? Okay. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting the, um, <laughs> it, it's a matter oh. of getting. Oh. <laughs> just, yeah, I would cut it again. Yeah. <laughs> just slide it over and cut it again. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> I thought I had that centered. It's so weird. You probably wiggled oh, off when you weren't looking. Right. Okay. I'm going to glue my arms on. Uh, they are a little tricky to glue because for some reason the long stringy things don't glue as well as large areas. So I don't know why that is, but 
put the glue on and then you might have to just glue half it down and then go back and put glue on the board, make it work. Or maybe it'll just behave itself, but I have had some issues with this before. Part of it is while you're trying to position it, it dries. <laughs> There we go. Cindy, you're very quiet. You doing okay over there? You're muted. That's why I can't hear you. I am doing well. Good. How's it looking? Um, I'm, I'm not going to do the lighter green shading until I, I'm going to go ahead and, and you know go to the stem and all of that. Okay. But, uh, you know, other than, other than that, and then I'm going to go back and do the, what do you call it? Uh, the tip of it, I'm going to probably put a little gold or something on that later. Yep. Okay. But I'm happy about my lower uh, yellow. Good. Yeah, that looks nice. Sunflower looking things. Yeah, it is in the sunflower family. The thistle and the sunflower. I just looked up the anatomy of a, a artichoke, and and I think the actual little yellow arms are are just stylistic. They're just decorative. Yeah, they don't mean anything. They. I've um, never. I've never seen an artichoke with arms. No, I think <laughs> it's interesting that your brother grew some. Yeah, I gotta find that picture for you. Please do. I, I think that would be amazing to see. Um, something that's easier to grow and is in the same family is the cardoon. And it has an absolutely gorgeous flower when it blooms. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Is it a thistle? Is it a thistle? Yes, it's, it's related to the artichoke. Uh -huh. And it's at a, uh, instead of the, Instead of the bud, it's this. Actually, it's the stem that's eaten. Oh wow! What? Tell what you, the word you're saying, Gretchen. Car like an automobile. A car dune. Oh. One word. One word. Wow. C C A R D O O N. Huh. Have you had one? Um. They were grown at the um, dairy where I worked, and I went on vacation, and when I came back, somebody had mowed them down <laughs> just before they were ready to bloom. They are a biennial, so they need to be grown in it. They can be grown around here, Cindy. Um, they have to be able to overwinter. They're sort of like parsley, you know. You get the green foliage. Beautiful basil leaves. The, the uh, plant itself is about um, three and a half, four feet in diameter. The basil wow. leaves are. It's very, very um, spectacular looking. I've written that one down. Okay. I told Lisa um, that when we were in California, we saw a field. We went down toward Monter Monterey and we just Monterey. saw this field of the fruit plants. Field. And they were artichokes, but they're very big and bushy plants. They're huge. Yep. Uh, Lisa, I'm just getting ready to cut the red stem. Uh, it goes, it goes down to the below where the arms join. Right at that joint. Yes. Right at the joint. Okay. Thank you.
So I got my arm on there. They're not even, but I'm not worried about that. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I think sure. that's kind of cool. I think that's that's that, that's my style. Right. A little yeah, awkward. I think asymmetrical is more interesting anyway. Yeah. So maybe what I'll do is move this like that. I'm saying that nothing is or not. See, that's the other thing. I can play with it. I can go, do I want it like this or do I want it like this? Oh, that's a good one. I hadn't thought about that. Oh, that I kind of like that. What do you think? The right one should be up just uh, turned. No, just uh, turn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. See, now it looks like a real plant. It wouldn't be so symmetrical, right? Right. Lisa, what is the paper to you uh, for the bottom of the stem, below the arms? That's the same as the arms. Same as the arms. Okay, thank you. So you, did not, you did not try to cut the arms and that stem in one piece, did you? No, it doesn't fit. You, have to, you have to move the paper around a little bit. Okay. So here's what my paper looked like when I finished cutting it. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Can everybody see that? <laughs> yeah. That's not the red, is it? No, that's for your arms. The that's arms. the gold. I thought that. So now I'm going to play with my. Play with my. And then I'll put them, glue them on. Beth and Sharon, are you guys doing okay? They're not talking. I'm sorry, I, I was muted. I'm, I'm working on shading my long leafy things before I glue them on. Okay, just checking in. Thanks, I appreciate it. I've got, I'm actually dealing with a post-surgery situation myself, my dog, and he's getting very restless wondering what oh. mommy here. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Oh, I know. Has he got the cone of shame or? Well, I have a Zen collar, which is kind of um, the same idea, but it's, you blow it up. It's like a ring that oh, you yeah. blow up. And yep, it's inflatable. Nice. And it's really, I think it's much kinder, you know? Yeah. Does the red stem, um, I think you did, but it has shading that was done with brown? Yes. And you could do it with red if you have it. Um, I used brown. Okay. And just sort of washed it on. I also put a little bit of that ink on there. You did ink it a little bit first? I did. With, the ink helps to pull out the print a little bit. Um, 
it also kind of hides a multitude of sin if you're not real. <laughs> yep, it does. <clears throat> was smart. I never thought about painting the board. I mean, gluing put the glue on the board and make that little fine piece come down. Because you yeah. can wipe it off. Right. Oh, that's cool. I am. <laughs> it's like a marathon. Lisa, mm -hmm. what part of this red stem did you ink? Uh, right up where it's going to go under the yellow leaves. And then the bottom part below the little ball. The whole thing or just one edge? I think the whole thing. It's a little hard to control it that much. <laughs> right. Um, then I went back with brown paint and made an edge on it. Okay. Thank you. I can hold that up there. Can you see that better? Oh, much. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Okay, so, so would now you I, hold it up to the leaves, both two bottom leaves, one more time, the green one. So the bottom of the right one and the top. I've of the got the light coming from over on this side. Yeah. Going. Yeah. So everything on the right is dark and the things on the left are light. Thank you. Paper. On my you, know, you turned uh the picture of the finished product that you gave us. Yep. Both leaves are turned with the long, smooth edge at the top, but I like what you did in this one better. Okay, you can do it either way. That's the way the template was, the way I did it today. And this one, I turned it upside down. Yeah, I think I like this one better because everything's going up. I like that too. No, no. What I'm saying is that on the template, the long, smooth side is on the bottom of the of the leaf. Right. But like, on like the picture that you gave us, the long, smooth side is on the top of the leaf. This one. Yes, but now the one that you're doing, you reverse the left leaf, and I really like that much better. Did I? 
Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, I see. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. The long, smooth side is on the bottom again. Yeah, it's just the positioning is different. Yep. My side. He reversed. My bad. Yeah, but see how changing, making these not symmetrical made you not notice that this is way off. <laughs> right? Or it doesn't, it doesn't bother me as much that this is off because these are off now. I want to see everybody's arms. Did you get them on there straight, even, symmetrical? Because it's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Lisa, I'm, I'm just working on the, the, the red stem part. I haven't even got to the leaves. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom leaves, but keep in mind, if you are nervous about hand painting those, you could cut those out of your green paper and glue them down. The same, using the same way, use this paper and your template. Um, I'm gonna do it freehand because that's easier. <laughs> so I will demonstrate that. You can watch if you want, or you can keep working. <laughs> or you can go back and watch it later when I post the, the three hour video as this is going to be like a feature film, right? It's so exciting. You're doing that in the brown? Yes. So I'm doing it in brown and I'm just using my small round brush and then I'm gonna go back in with the green to, with the flat brush to do the leaves. I don't know, these leaves might turn out different than those leaves. Depends on how it comes out. I'm using the, the flat brush and that lets me make the stroke narrower when I've got it on edge like this and wider when I, can you see that? Narrow on edge and wider when I put it flat. So you might wanna practice that on a piece of paper if you wanna do that freehand. I think somebody should do this by cutting out the leaves. I'm curious now to see what it would look like. It's almost like, why, why is that painted when nothing else is painted on this? I love it. 
the, the difference. <laughs> I like the difference too. I like I like the contrast. Okay. Good. So I think mine is done. So now I am available to help. <laughs> I'll zip this in a little closer. Oh, look, look, look. I've got my ribs way too heavy. There. Mm. She has a lot okay. of definition here in her artichoke. I don't have. Mm. Let's see if I can get some more light on there. Oh, this doesn't want to have light. Okay. Mine looks much better from a distance. <laughs> Should be a floor cloth, right? That you put on the floor, four feet away. Hang it high. Can I see? Oh, I haven't gotten too far. I was looking had to have pretty, the artichoke. Oh, they look nice. Yeah, but mine's too heavy or something. But anyway, I didn't have a real one to look at. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> As we know, that's why yours is so perfect. No, right. I just got my first arm cut out, and I'm going for my second one. Oh, well, now I can see everybody. <laughs> Tina, can I see yours? Couldn't see before. Mm. You're all done. Excellent. Yeah. That's really nice. I want to um, do the artichoke a little bit, you know, light and shade, shade it and lighten it. Right. Yeah. I know. That's pretty. Did you paint your bottom leaves? Yes. Oh, cool. Lisa, could you move your uh, painting up just a little so we can see the painted leaves a little better? Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to find that picture of the artichoke blossom for you.
You were talking about your donkey. Sorry, what was that? What did you say? You were talking about your donkey. Yeah. Look what I get to play with all day. Oh, look at them. Are they, what are they? Are they're they two baby chicks. Oh, <laughs> but they're gonna grow up to be chickens. Yeah, oh yes. <laughs> I had chickens when I was a kid and I hated them. They chased me around. They were horrible. So, oh, no. Oh, those around are, the Pied Piper. Those are very cute. Yeah, they all have names. <laughs> you can tell them apart? Yes. <laughs> How old are they? How old are the chickens? They're four days old. Oh, I, so um, I incubate them out. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes. I just love we it. We got into chickens over the pandemic. I'm sorry? We, we got chickens when the pandemic, you know, descended and, um, Oh my gosh, it's so easy to get a lot of chickens. <laughs> oh, yes. It's like you need a blue egg and a brown egg and a dotted I egg. Have some blue, brown. Yeah. It looks like I have a, um, Easter eggs when I'm giving the eggs away, you know? Yeah, that's nice. It's kind of neat. Yeah. So <laughs> this, this is a blossom. Oh, wow. Oh, Isn't my. That cool? Yeah. That is really cool. I don't know how big that is. It must have been a small one, I think. That looks like it's a volume. Very pretty. Is that one of your brothers? Yes. So now that it's done, how do you... What do you do with it? So you can finish it. Um, and the way I finish it, once it's dry, make sure it's really dry. So don't finish it today. Um, I'll do this one because I didn't put anything on it. It's the, the original one that I did. Um, and you can do it just by putting more of your glue over the top. So I will show you that. Come on. So you're just gonna paint it on and it will add a little texture to it also. What are you painting on, Lisa? I'm sorry. The glue. Oh, the okay. Uh-huh. And it will help to just glue everything down that you might have, you might have little corners that are sticking up and that'll help stick those down. Um, like that. This little guy just popped up on me. So it doesn't matter if it's thin glue, it's just, you're going to just coat it with glue. Yeah. Okay. But it needs to be really dry when you do it. Yeah. And now, will you put this under glass or no glass? You don't need to put it under glass. You can if you want to. Uh, it doesn't need the protection because this glue is plastic. OK. And it's also um, light re um, UV resistant. So it should keep it from fading. OK. So I will leave that there and we'll see if it dries by the time we're done. Probably won't. Lisa? Yeah? Um, I'm just getting ready to cut the arms and lower stem out. 
could you go over again what you shaded and um, pulled it up? I'd like to take a photo of it. Sure. So, all right, so on the arms, I did the ink down, down below, down here, heavier, and then I did ink it going up. Um, but fading it out as I went up. And then I did some brown paint just along the edge. And I did all of that on the, you can see my paper that has the, that's where I had the edge on it. Just painted around the edge. Um, and then on this side, I did on the, more, made it darker on the right. Okay. And that's the brown paint? Yes. And did you just do the outside edge or did you also do the inside edge? It looks like I did the inside edge on both of them, just up to about here, about halfway up. Okay. I was trying to keep it lighter as it went up to the top. That's why I didn't want to do too much of it. I can send you, I'll take a photograph of this and send it to you by email. So oh, wonderful. Can you tell me again the name of the paper you are using as your uh, you know, shiny paper that you're using under your painting? Oh, it's called paper palette this so it comes whoop, um it comes in a pad like that. okay it's a, a pad paper palette pad. good okay thank you So it is 12 o'clock. I'm going to have to wrap things up. <laughs> Lisa, when, where do you get your um, the floor cloth? Where do I get the canvas, you mean? Who, who asked me that? Tina. Are you, Tina, are you wondering about where I get the canvas to make the floor cloth? Yes. Um, I, so I get it in hundred yard bolts. <laughs> okay. Um, so, but you can get it uh, on, at like Dick Blick or um, Jerry's Artorama. They both sell canvas online. Just if you order it from them, um ask them you have to call them and ask them to roll it and not fold it if you're getting a larger piece if they fold it you'll never get the creases out <laughs> so if you can find it you want for floor cloths i don't recommend anything lighter than number eight right so if you can find an art supply store that has it on a roll then that's the best way to get it because then you don't have to worry about how they're going to ship it to you Oh, okay. Very good. And then the, um, you said the number four was for? I use that for the larger ones for like dining room size, eight by tens and things like that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Lisa, I'm gonna have to paint the leaves. I'm I want to hand leaf paint the leaves at the bottom, but I need to do that later. I think. Yeah, I don't want to rush it. Yeah. So this is mine. Hey, that looks good. I like it. 
Beautiful. Yeah, very nice. Thanks. It's so boy, the tough the tough thing was gluing those um the, the long leaves. Yes. I, I tore those a couple of times, so I've touched them up. They're pretty okay. wet. And I hope the medium will like help flatten them out, you know? Yeah, yeah, it will. And when they dry, it it wrinkles and stuff go away usually. Okay. <laughs> so I I hope you enjoy this it, it, it's a it's a weird way to do things but it, i i just think it's so fun to play with paper. it is it is and it it lets you free yourself hey i gotta fly with mine you see my visitor here <laughs> oh wait get out of here um it frees you up because the paper has already got an image on it, so you, you you can't get too fussy with it. I mean, you could, but why bother? The paper's already gotten fussy, so leave it alone. No. What did you think, Cindy? Did you did you like doing that? And the, the reality is, I loved it, and I I have more to do. You know, I don't mind being not finished. Yeah. And I would appreciate if you'd snap that a picture of that just so I can look at the shade. Sure, I, I will do that right on you guys. Can I draw one more door prize? Go for it. All right. Oh, please do. <laughs> Beth, Beth Claywitter. Yay. Thank Yay. you. Thank you guys. It's been fun and it's not going to be long, I pray, until we're back together in person. Yeah. I can't I, wait. You guarantee that, Cindy. Beg your pardon? I, I said, I hope you're guaranteeing that. <laughs> uh, well, as you know, this day and age, very little is guaranteed. That's right. Well, yes, I, I was being facetious, of course. Well, I appreciate so much, Lisa, seriously, you putting in the time and the energy and, and the, you know, to learn to assume because maybe we can do this again, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, um, we'll certainly talk about it and see see what comes of it. Um, but send me an email telling me what you thought on it. <laughs> Or give me a call um, and maybe we can do another one. If there's something, if you think of something you think would be fun to do this way or or a small floor cloth project logistic way, I'm not sure that that would work, but we could try. Mostly because it takes so long to do a floor cloth. I don't know if we could do that all day doing Zoom. <laughs> it's a table. Lisa? Lisa, instead of doing a floor cloth, how about doing placemats? That's a possibility. I have thought about that. And all I'd have to do is show you how to do one, and then you could make the others. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Or a table runner. Yeah. 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 Tina, what were you saying? I can't wait to do a floor mat. <laughs> You can come to my house and do the ones that I'm supposed to be doing right now. How's that sound? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to skedaddle. Um, shoot me any questions if you have any. Uh, I'm happy to answer. And I will get an image of you right away. Um, and thank you, Cindy, for the door prizes. Do we get to see what they are? Please thank Mark for um, allowing us to meet like this. Oh, that looks great, Ruth. Good job. Thanks. Nice. Uh, done. Ruth, I let me say yours. Him. Okay. All right. Take Thank care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank this Thank was you, fun. Everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. I don't know how to turn Bye. it off.